How to make and use a high voltage programmer to regain control of your AT Tiny device if you've accidentally set the fuses incorrectly and can no longer reprogram it with a bootloader or regular in-system programming method. The fuses can control many internal functionality traits of the chip, such as what clock source it's using and how fast the clock should be, whether or not the chip will allow itself to be reprogrammed, and even whether or not the chip has a reset pin which would be required for an in-system programmer to put the device into programming mode. If these fuses get set incorrectly so a bootloader or an in-system programmer can no longer configure the device to program itself, a high voltage programmer is needed to override all those settings and get in to program the fuses again so the device will be unlocked. I've been using Atmel ATtiny85 chips lately especially since they come on these Digispark boards, and I wanted to change some of the fuse settings to give myself better control over the GPIO. I was using Arduino as an in-system programmer to try to program the AT Tiny fuses, but I made some human errors and accidentally set them incorrectly and rendered the device useless. So I had to make a high voltage fuse resetter and maybe if I tried different things I could actually get it to work resetting the fuses while on a Digispark board, but at the time I ended up just removing the AT Tiny chip and I put it on a surface mount to dip through hole breakout board so I could use it on a breadboard and just program it as is. Using a fuse calculator like on here, if you choose what chip you have, ATtiny85 in this case, it'll show you the fuses available to set. And so you can either check them off and then see what the bytes are gonna be for low, high, and extended fuses. Or if you know the bytes you want, you can enter them here and it will show you what features are enabled or disabled. So if I have fuses that are set like this, on this high byte, it's disabled the reset pin and it turned it into a regular GPIO. So since I can't reset the chip anymore with that pin, I can't use a regular in-system programmer. I have no choice but to use a high voltage programmer to override any of these features and power the chip up in a state where I can reset these fuses and re-enable the ability to reset using this pin. So the high byte being 5D right now, if I want to re-enable the reset pin, I uncheck this, and instead of 5D, now the high byte would be DD. And that's what I would want to program into the fuses with the high voltage programmer to re-enable the reset pin as a reset function. Here's the data sheet for the ATtiny85. High voltage serial programming. The high voltage refers to 12 volt supply. There's a serial programming algorithm for this. So the first thing we have to do here is set three of the programming pins to all zero from table 2014 above. So that's serial data in and out and serial instruction in. We also set the chip's power VCC to zero and the reset pin to zero. Then we give five volts to VCC and then after 20 to 60 microseconds is when we give 12 volts to reset and so on. In looking for a programmer to do this, I found a couple of things, starting with this page. And there's a programmer circuit right here using Arduino. Many high voltage programming schematics out there have 12 volts always applied to the reset pin through a 1K resistor and they bring the reset low with a transistor when it's time. But I preferred to keep the reset pulled low and only apply 12 volts when it's time. So here it shows how to do it this way and a prototype and there's two sketches shown. And then Ralph Bacon did his own version of this. He's got a video on that and files are over on GitHub. He added a zip socket, a 12 volt battery, and a status LED, a buzzer. So there's a few extra GPIO here. And I liked how this sketch was laid out. So I started from this sketch. I like this menu option in the serial monitor where you can enter in one or two to perform the action you want instead of just brute force powering up this sketch and then it goes and 
hard codes a certain set of fuses. And this gave me an idea to expand it even further because what if I don't really want to program the fuses? I also would like to just be able to read them. So I changed some of these things here and made my own sketch. And that's over here. But first, my schematic. This looks a little chaotic, so I redrew this NPN and PNP circuit right here. That's my modified 12 volt reset circuit. So we'll look at that, but in the meantime, otherwise most of my sketch here is the same. We have all these data pins here through 1K resistors. Coming over to the target device we want to read or program. The original sketch used digital 13 output to control the reset, but because this is tied to the LED on board, I'm not sure if that's the reason, but I was getting issues when this board's reset. It would actually toggle the reset three times while powering up. And my whole purpose here was to be able to control that. So I just chose to go down here to digital seven instead of 13. And that controls my reset. So I have a 12 volt supply coming down to the breadboard down here. The 12 volts really only goes to this PNP transistor. And when the transistor is on, 12 volts comes over to the reset pin on the target device. If 12 volts is not present, we just have a 1K pull down to keep it out of reset. I ended up putting 100 nano across the power supply pins on the target device because sometimes when I would read the fuses, it would give me gibberish. Soon as I put a decoupling capacitor, it cleaned it up, made it a lot more stable. I'm assuming it's because of all the wiring and that it would be better if I made a dedicated soldered circuit with shorter wiring, etc. And because we have data in and out between the two boards here, we need a common ground. But otherwise, the only power source coming from Arduino is digital eight output. When it's high, it's using five volts to power the target device. So let's look at this reset circuit drawn a little more civilized. I used this circuit. I drew this at circuitlab.com just as a quick sketch and I threw labels here. So the Arduino pin 13 is what controls the reset of the target device. And if I want to bring 12 volts to pin one on the target, which is reset, I set this high so it turns on the NPN, brings the PNP base low enough to turn on, and that presents 12 volts to the reset pin on the target. If this control is low, the NPN is off, so the base of the PNP is pulled high, turning it off, and then we just have a 1K pull down to bring the target reset low. So looking through the sketch, here's all of the control pins for programming the target device. My reset is down on pin seven because pin 13 with the LED was giving me trouble. We have serial communication, a pin to power the target with five volts from a GPIO, and when reading or writing to the low, high, and extended fuse locations, they don't exactly have an address, but these values configured right here are used when communicating with the chip to access those fuses. It's all laid out in the datasheet. It's more like a set of instructions to get at the fuses rather than addressing them. So in my menu options for programming or reading the fuses, since right now I am trying to emulate a Digispark chip, these are the default low, high, and extended fuses that are set in Digispark. So I can reset a messed up ATtiny85 to Digispark specifications by choosing menu option one. So these are low, high, and extended fuse values one. Then I also have a set of values number two. It'll be the same, but I've turned the reset pin back into a reset instead of a GPIO, so I can use in-system programmers. And these are just variables while programming. Based on what menu option I choose, I will assign whatever fuses to the target, high, low, and extended. Since I want an option to be able to read the fuses without writing, I just have a flag here. If I'm going to only read, I set it to true. And that allows me to skip some parts down below where it would go into write mode. And although we don't really use the feature, we can read the signature in the device and figure out what chip it is. So an ATtiny85 is going to have this signature. So in the setup, we configure all of our control pins and we set everything low to start. 
so that we're turning off power to the chip, we're turning off the 12 volt reset, and as this algorithm said, we have to set 000 on these three programming pins. So those are all set low. Then we go in the main loop and go into the serial monitor looking for input using get command. All get command will do, print out the menu, and I built it up with three options. So I can just read the fuses, I can set them to a default Digispark, my own custom with the reset pin enabled, and we keep looping around until we've gotten a 0, 1, or 2 entered from the serial monitor. Otherwise it'll just keep reprinting the same menu, waiting for valid input. When we receive a valid command, we go through this switch case. So if we entered a 0, we set the flag to say we're only interested in reading fuses. Or if we choose option 1 or 2, we assign to the target fuse programming values the hard-coded set of fuses number 1 or set number 2. And whatever we're going to do, whether we are reading or writing, we still need to enter the programming mode. So now that we have a valid instruction from the serial monitor, we go and do this process laid out here for serial programming mode. We keep 12 volts off, we turn on power to the chip, we wait 40 microseconds, then we apply 12 volts to the reset, so we turn reset on, and so on. And then just because we can, we read the signature to see what device we have, then we read the fuses just so we know what they are, and if we are not only reading, so we are going to write something, we've already assigned our desired fuses to the target low, high, and extended values, so we go and write the fuses for low, high, and extended with those target values, and now that we've changed the fuses, we want to read them again just to see what they are compared to what we wanted. And then we go and basically power the chip back down, we're done programming. The rest of these functions are just things that control writing and reading and shifting the data on those pins, the routine to read the signature. I didn't mess with any of these functions. Here's the high voltage programmer built on a breadboard and it looks chaotic, but here's the Arduino Uno. All of those digital control pins are coming to a breadboard. 1K series resistors are here. The PNP high side 12 volt switch for the reset circuit is right here. 12 volts is coming from a boost converter powered from a 9 volt battery. So 12 volts will come to the rail on the breadboard and get switched in by the PNP transistor. So the 12 volts as well as VCC and all the other digital controls for the target device come to another breadboard and the 8 pin ATtiny85 is right here. So the Arduino is programming this ATtiny85 as a high voltage programmer with a 12 volt power supply. Here's the programmer sketch running and the menu came up so I can choose to read fuses or I can write fuses in one of two preset ways. I have the serial monitor set up so when I enter text it doesn't add a carriage return or new line characters. If there's extra characters the menu might show up a couple of times. We'll enter zero to read the fuses. It finds 930B as our signature which is ATtiny85. It reads the fuses and the low, high and extended fuses are E1, 5D and FE and that's the Digispark default fuses. So here's what E1 5D FE looks like and the external reset pin is disabled so that pin is just a GPIO and we won't be able to put the device in reset. So I can use my predefined option number two to set the chip's P5 pin as a reset mode again. So I'll enter two and it should reprogram the fuses it found ATtiny85, it read the fuses again before we did anything, they are unchanged. Now it says it's writing fuses and then it reads them back. Now it says E1, DD, and FE. Let's just read those again to be sure. E1, DD, FE. So if I set that over here, now this external reset disable is unchecked 
which means the reset function is re-enabled on this pin. Now if the fuses ever get messed up, we can use a sketch like this to set them a certain predictable way. Maybe even add more features to this menu option in the sketch so you can individually enter just the low, just the high, or just the extended fuse byte. Or maybe to read in one of those fuse bytes, see what it's set for, and then change just one bit and have it rewrite what used to be there plus whatever you just requested. Now that the system is in place, we can do whatever we need. Thanks to those who put all the effort into this project in the first place, including this Arduino DIY site, Ralph Bacon's version of it, and countless other sites, blogs, forum posts all over the place that address various aspects of high voltage programming. Hopefully my version is also of some use to someone out there. It certainly helped me, and I couldn't have done it without those other blogs.